Good day to you all, dear ones, and welcome to this 28th day of October, day 302 in our journey through the Bible. Hello to everyone out there. My name's Hunter. I am your brother and your Bible reading coach. I show up with you every day to spend some time together in the pages of the scriptures. And we're going to let the scriptures do what they do and point our hearts to the one who is the living word of God the one alone who has the words of life. And today, my friend, we are back in the book of Job, chapter 19. That's where we'll start. And then we open the gospel of Mark, which is near and dear to my heart. So Mark 1 and 2, that's where we'll finish. Father, thank you for bringing us to this day. Thank you that you're present with us at all times. Thank you that we have ears now to hear and receive your good news. Help us to hear it. Job 19. Job's sixth speech. A response to Bildad. Then Job spoke again. How long will you torture me? How long will you try to crush me with your words? You've already insulted me ten times. You should be ashamed of treating me so badly. Even if I have sinned, that is my concern, not yours. You think you're better than I am using my humiliation as evidence of my sin? But it is God who has wronged me, captured me in his net. I cry out, help, but no one answers me. I protest, but there's no justice. God has blocked my way, so I cannot move. He's plunged my path into darkness He has stripped me of my honor and removed the crown from my head. He has demolished me on every side, and I am finished. He has uprooted my hope like a fallen tree. His fury burns against me. He counts me as an enemy. His troops advance. They build up roads to attack me. They camp all around my tent. My relatives stay far away, and my friends have turned against me. My family is gone, and my close friends have forgotten me. My servants and maids consider me a stranger. I'm like a foreigner to them. When I call my servant, he doesn't come. I have to plead with him. My breath is repulsive to my wife. I'm rejected by my own family. Even young children despise me. When I stand to speak, they turn their backs on me. My close friends detest me. Those I loved have turned against me. I have been reduced to skin and bones and have escaped death by the skin of my teeth. Have mercy on me, my friends. Have mercy, for the hand of God has struck me. Must you also persecute me like God does? Haven't you chewed me up enough? Oh, that my words could be recorded. Oh, that they could be inscribed on a monument, carved with an iron chisel and filled with lead, engraved forever in the rock. But as for me, I know that my Redeemer lives, and he will stand upon the earth at last, and after my body has decayed, yet in my body I will see God. I will see him for myself. Yes, I will see him with my own eyes. I am overwhelmed at the thought. How dare you go on persecuting me, saying, It's his own fault. You should fear punishment yourselves, for your attitudes deserve punishment. Then you will know that there is indeed a judgment. Mark 1. This is the good news about Jesus, the Messiah, the Son of God. It began just as the prophet Isaiah had written, Look, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, and he will prepare your way. He is a voice shouting in the wilderness, Prepare the way for the Lord's coming. Clear the road for him. This messenger was John the Baptist. He was in the wilderness and preached that people should be baptized to show that they had repented of their sins and turned to God to be forgiven. All of Judea, including all the people of Jerusalem, went out to see and hear John, and when they confessed their sins, he baptized them in the Jordan River. His clothes were woven from coarse camel hair, and he wore a leather belt around his waist. For food he ate locust and wild honey. John announced, Someone is coming soon who is greater than I am, so much greater that I'm not even worthy to stoop down like a slave and untie the straps of his sandals. I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. One day Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee, and John baptized him in the Jordan River. 
As Jesus came up out of the water, he saw the heavens splitting apart and the Holy Spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice from heaven said, You are my dearly loved son, and you bring me great joy. The Spirit then compelled Jesus to go into the wilderness, where he was tempted by Satan for forty days. He was out among the wild animals, and the angels took care of him. Later on, after John was arrested, Jesus went into Galilee, where he preached God's good news. The time promised by God has come. The kingdom of God is near. Repent of your sins and believe the good news. One day as Jesus was walking along the shore of the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew throwing a net into the water, for they fished for a living. Jesus called out to them, Come, follow me, and I will show you how to fish for people. And they left their nets at once and followed him. A little farther up the shore, Jesus saw Zebedee's sons, James and John, in a boat preparing their nets. He called to them at once, and they also followed him, leaving their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men. Jesus and his companions went to the town of Capernaum. When the Sabbath came, he went into the synagogue and began to teach. The people were amazed at his teaching, for he taught with real authority, quite unlike the teachers of religious law. Suddenly, a man in the synagogue who was possessed by an evil spirit cried out, Why are you interfering with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus reprimanded him. Be quiet. Come out of the man, he ordered. At that, the evil spirit screamed, threw the man into a convulsion, and then came out of him. Amazement gripped the audience, and they began to discuss what had happened. What sort of new teaching is this? They asked excitedly. It has such authority. Even evil spirits obey his orders. The news about Jesus spread quickly throughout the entire region of Galilee. After Jesus left the synagogue with James and John, they went to Simon and Andrew's home. Now Simon's mother-in-law was sick in bed with a high fever. They told Jesus about her right away. So he went to her bedside, took her by the hand, and helped her sit up. Then the fever left her, and she prepared a meal for them. That evening after sunset, many sick and demon-possessed people were brought to Jesus. The whole town gathered at the door to watch. So Jesus healed many people who were sick with various diseases, and he cast out many demons. But because the demons knew who he was, he did not allow them to speak. Before daybreak the next morning, Jesus got up and went out to an isolated place to pray. Later, Simon and the others went out to find him. When they found him, they said, Everyone is looking for you. But Jesus replied, We must go on to the other towns as well. I will preach to them too. That is why I came. So he traveled throughout the region of Galilee, preaching in their synagogues and casting out demons. A man with leprosy came and knelt in front of Jesus, begging to be healed. If you are willing, you can heal me and make me clean, he said. Moved with compassion, Jesus reached out and touched him. I am willing, he said. Be healed. Instantly, the leprosy disappeared and the man was healed. Then Jesus sent him on his way with a stern warning. Don't tell anyone about this. Instead, go to the priest and let him examine you. Take along the offering required in the law of Moses for those who have been healed of leprosy. This will be a public testimony that you have been cleansed. But the man went and spread the word, proclaiming to everyone what had happened. As a result, large crowds soon surrounded Jesus, and he couldn't publicly enter a town anywhere. He had to stay out in the secluded places, but people from everywhere kept coming to him. Mark 2 When Jesus returned to Capernaum several days later, the news spread quickly that he was back home. Soon the house where he was staying was so packed with visitors that there was no more room, even outside the door. While he was preaching God's word to them, four men arrived, carrying a paralyzed man on a mat. They couldn't bring him to Jesus because of the crowd, so they dug a hole through the roof above his head. Then they lowered the man on his mat right down in front of Jesus, seeing their faith. Jesus said to the paralyzed man, My child, your sins are forgiven. But some of the teachers of religious law who were sitting there thought to themselves, What is he saying? This is blasphemy. Only God can forgive sins. Jesus knew immediately what they were thinking. So he asked them, Why do you question this in your hearts? 
Is it easier to say to the paralyzed man, your sins are forgiven, or stand up, pick up your mat, and walk? So I will prove to you that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. Then Jesus turned to the paralyzed man and said, Stand up, pick up your mat, and go home. And the man jumped up, grabbed his mat, and walked out through the stunned onlookers. They were all amazed and praised God, exclaiming, We've never seen anything like this before. Then Jesus went out to the lake shore again and taught the crowds that were coming to him. As he walked along, he saw Levi, the son of Alphaeus, sitting at his tax collector's booth. Follow me and be my disciple, Jesus said to him. So Levi got up and followed him. Later, Levi invited Jesus and his disciples to his home as dinner guests, along with many tax collectors and other disreputable sinners. There were many people of this kind among Jesus' followers. But when the teachers of religious law, who were Pharisees, saw him eating with tax collectors and other sinners, they asked his disciples, Why does he eat with such scum? When Jesus heard this, he told them, Healthy people don't need a doctor, sick people do. I have come to call not those who think they are righteous, but those who know they are sinners. Once when John's disciples and the Pharisees were fasting, some people came to Jesus and asked, Why don't your disciples fast like John's disciples and the Pharisees do? Jesus replied, Do wedding guests fast while celebrating with the groom? Of course not. They can't fast while the groom is with them. But someday the groom will be taken away from them, and then they will fast. Besides, who would patch old clothing with a new cloth? For the new patch would shrink and rip away from the old cloth, leaving an even bigger tear than before. And no one puts new wine into old wineskins, for the wine would burst the wineskins, and the wine and the skins would be lost. New wine calls for new wineskins. One Sabbath day, as Jesus was walking through some grain fields, his disciples began breaking off heads of grain to eat. But the Pharisees said to Jesus, Look, why are they breaking the law by harvesting grain on the Sabbath? Jesus said to them, Haven't you ever read in the scriptures what David did when he and his companions were hungry? He went into the house of God during the days when Abiathar was high priest and broke the law by eating the sacred loaves of bread that only the priests were allowed to eat. He also gave some to his companions. Then Jesus said to them, The Sabbath was made to meet the needs of people, and not people to meet the requirements of the Sabbath. So the Son of Man is Lord, even over the Sabbath. And now may our Lord, who is Lord over the Sabbath, may he now give his blessing to the reading of his word. Amen. Words are being spoken in this crowd that only Jesus can hear. The crowds have come to listen to Jesus, but Jesus has come to hear the crowds. There is a frequency of faith that Jesus is tuned into and that he alone seems to be hearing. There is a silent faith being spoken by some in the crowds. There are these four friends of the paralyzed man silently speaking words of faith like, Let's push through this crowd. Let's dig into this roof. Let's hold onto these ropes. Let's see what Jesus will do. Their hearts were speaking words of faith. Jesus tells us what their faith-filled actions say. Mark records each little action that speaks of faith. Pushing through the crowd, digging into the roof, holding onto the ropes. Jesus sees and hears it all. Verse 2. Some men brought to him a paralyzed man lying on a mat. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to them, Take heart, son. Your sins are forgiven. There are other things being said and done in the crowd, too, that only Jesus can hear and see. Some are speaking the language of disbelief. Their lack of faith questions the very heart of God. When God offers forgiveness of sins, they don't believe it. When God offers healing for a paralyzed soul, They don't believe it. Disparaging words of scorn and unbelief are spoken by some in the crowd, and Jesus alone seems to hear it. He hears them say, verse 7, Why does this man speak like that? He's blaspheming. Who can forgive sins but God alone? 
Words are being spoken. A frequency of faith that he alone hears. The friends who carry their paralyzed friend to Jesus were saying something in their hearts. They were saying words like, perhaps God in his goodness will help us. Jesus heard those words and he saw their actions and he spoke life to them. What words does Jesus hear coming from your heart? Are they words of faith or words that disparage God? Words of disbelief? Are they words that say, perhaps God in his goodness will help me? Are they words that say, I will push through, I will dig in, I will hold on, I will trust in God's good heart? Jesus alone hears the words of faith in your heart. Sometimes faith requires us to push through, to dig in, to hold on. Be reminded today of this story, that God is good. You can trust him. You can push through. You can dig in. You can hold on. You can trust in God's good heart. That's the prayer that I have for my own soul. That's the prayer that I have for my family, for my wife and my daughters and my son. And that's the prayer that I have for you. May it be so. We continue now with our time of prayer. You can find these prayers in the show notes of today's podcast. I invite you now to read along with those prayers Or you can also just meditate on these words that are being spoken over you on behalf of our life in Jesus. And now, let us pray. Lord God Almighty and Everlasting Father, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power, that we might not fall into sin or be overcome by adversity. And in all we do, Direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Dear Lord, you have made of one blood all the peoples of the earth and sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far and those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold, pour out your Spirit on all flesh, and hasten the coming of your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now, Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. And where there is sadness, joy. O Lord, grant that I might not seek so much to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in the giving that we receive, in the pardoning that we are pardoned, it is in the dying that we are born unto eternal life. Amen. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your grateful children, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and all you have made. We bless you for your creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, and above all, for your immeasurable love and your redemption of the world through our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and the hope of glory. Lord, we pray, give us such awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but with our lives, by the giving up of ourselves for your service in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory through all ages. Amen. And now, as our Lord has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Loving God, we give you thanks for restoring us in your image and nourishing us with spiritual food. Now send us forth as forgiven people, healed and renewed, that we may proclaim your love to the world and continue in the risen life of Christ. Amen. Well, thank you, dear ones, for joining me in prayer today. May God help us to stay in a posture of prayer throughout the day, aware more and more, moment by moment, that God is with us. And not only that, He is for us. (laughs) And that is good news indeed. Hey, before I let you go, I know that some of you have been interested in buying our You Are Loved mugs, and you've gone to our website, hunterpottery.com, and have seen that they are all sold out. Well, I've got good news because in a few weeks, we're going to have another drop of about 50 of these mugs, and hopefully they'll be available for you before the holiday season, so... Put that in your back pocket, and I'll let you know more when the mugs are out of the kiln. I've been busy working on the potter's wheel, turning and churning the clay into something that maybe you'll enjoy. Well, hey, I have enjoyed spending some time with you again today, and I plan on being back here again tomorrow, and we're going to do it again. Lord willing, and the creek don't rise, your brother Hunter plans on being here Until that time, let's go forward in God's joy. Let's let his joy be our strength and let us always remember this, that you are loved. No doubt about it. Alrighty, I'll talk to you again tomorrow. You guys take care. Bye-bye.